That came out perfect. Welcome back to Phillips Hot Rod Garage. All right, so I'm making a push to the finish on this old trunk lid. Now, if you're new to the channel, this is the current project that I'm working on, a 28 Model A Special Coupe. So don't go anywhere. I'm about to put a patch right here. I'm about to fix this messed up corner right here. And I'm gonna fix all these little dents right here. I'm gonna show you how to take these dents out quick and easy. All right, so last week, somebody asked me about the hammers and the dollies that I used to fix that big old dent in the last video. And to be honest with you, I just used a bunch of cheap hammers from Harbor Freight. Now they're actually really not very good hammers. To be honest with you, they're actually terrible. Oh yeah. The ends of them are not flat. The surfaces here. It looks like when they manufactured them, they just stuck them up against a belt sander or something and sanded them down. So when you take a flat file and file across them, you end up with high spots on there. You can't hammer out dents with a hammer that's not level. Let me show you how bad these things actually are. So this is a slapper that came in a Harbor Freight hammer set. And I wanna show you how bad this thing is. I've been filing on this thing off and on for a few days now. Hopefully you can see that. You can see where the file touches around here but there's a big low spot in the middle here and it's low up through here, big low spot right here. There is no way that you can dolly a panel out flat with a dolly or a spoon dolly or a slapper that is not flat. It's gotta be dead flat. So there's no way that a Harbor Freight slapper is gonna work straight out of the box. You gotta dress it up. So the slapper I used in my last video is not a Harbor Freight one. This one I actually bought from Mac Tools probably 15 or 20 years ago. I've had it a long time and it's a really nice flat one. But now this one did burn in my shop in 2018 when my shop burned down. Um, this one was in the fire and it did sit out and it got rusty for a while. And I decided one day just to clean out my old toolbox. And um, I got my hammers and dollies out. Let me show you what my hammers look like. All right, so these are my old hammers that burned up in the shop burn the handles out of them. I just hadn't ordered any handles yet. But as you can see, that one's cleaning up pretty nicely. I don't guess it hurt the metal because I've been using these dollies for a while and they're not scarring up or anything. What I did was soak them in Evaporust and then put some epoxy primer on them. I was priming something at the shop one day and I just took these hammers and hung them up and just started priming on them. Made them look better. But I got a little polishing to do on this one. But I think I'll order some handles for these pretty soon. These are a lot better hammers than what I'm using. I've been using these dollies for a while and that one's pitted. It needs to be dressed up, but I've been using them for rough stuff. Um, stuff I really didn't care about too much. Just like beating on the sub rails and stuff like that. But you know, I've noticed over time that they're not soft from the fire or anything. They're actually holding up very well. So I think I'll go ahead and dress them up and start using them again because even after going through the fire, they're probably better metal than the Harbor Freight ones. So there you go. I'm honestly just getting by with the bare minimum, doing the best I can <laughs> with what I got. All right, so back to these dents. Now what I'm gonna be using this week is a stud gun. For those of you who have never been around a body shop before and never seen a stud gun, I'll just give you a quick rundown of how it works. What you do is you take these little studs and you weld them to the surface. You just go right into the center of the dent with a stud you weld it on, and then that gives you something to attach a snatch bar to. You put the snatch bar, or slide hammer they call them, call them different things. You attach that to the stud, pop the dent out. Now, last week, if you remember, I had to weld three holes up right here. That's because back in the old days, the slide hammers, or snatch bars, whatever you call them, they would have a screw in the end of them. And generally what you would do if you had a big dent, you'd drill a 1 8 hole and then you would just run a screw down into that hole and that would give you something to snatch the dent out with. 
it just did not work that well. Uh, when you did that, you had to put a ton of body filler on. Having the holes in the surface let moisture from the back side of the panel get into the body filler and usually caused rust between the body filler and the panel. So we just got away from that. Don't do that too much in the body shop these days. But the stud welders do work really well. So what I'm gonna do is just line this up right here in the center of this dent. I'm gonna weld it in. I'm gonna show you how easy that is to get out. All right, so I got it welded now. I'm just gonna snatch it out. Well. All right, let's try that. All right, now I gotta cut it off. Now I gotta grind it flat. Just a light bit of work with the slapper. All right, let's check it out. All right, so there's how it looks. It was right in this area somewhere. I'm getting the light just right. You can see it right here is where it was at. Kind of where that dark spot is right there is where the stud was welded on. You can't feel it, it's gone. So nothing but a little bit of primer will fix that now. But as you can see, I got plenty to do, so might as well get at it. I was able to break those studs off. That was good. All right, so what I'm doing is using a file. I'm DA sanding it and then using a file to help me find the high areas. Not taking a lot of metal off, just kind of scratching it with it. Shows me where it's high, because I just straightened five dents right there. And so I want to get those as straight as I can. And the way to do that is using a file and then knocking down the path spot. Hitting them with the pointed end of the hammer, but not hitting them hard enough to leave big dips in it or like dents from that, but just enough to knock it down a little bit. And 
and that's getting pretty good right there. I think I'm about to call it good. Right, things are looking pretty good over here. I just fixed several right down here. Looks like I got some hammer marks here. I don't think I did those. I think those were already there from where these people were working on this big dent. I probably won't worry about those. They're not very bad. Fixed several up here. Got a little close right there with a cutoff wheel, cutting that stud off, but that'll be fine. But all this area right here is pretty nice now. A little bit of a low area here where these hammer marks are, but not gonna take much filler to take care of that. So I guess we need to keep on going. I'm gonna go ahead and fix a few more of these.
right, guys, that looks pretty good. Pretty happy with that. I think maybe just one good coat of polyester primer, some high bill polyester, will probably be all it takes to fix this area right through here. Because all the dents are gone, there's just a few waves that will all come out in the body work stage pretty easily. Not really gonna have to have any heavy, thick filler on there. It's all coming out pretty good. Now this is a different story down here, but we'll get to this last. But for now, we're gonna come over here and go ahead and straighten out these dents across here. I got a pretty good one right there I gotta get. Right here, right there's one. We'll go ahead and get these took care of here, and then we'll fix this, and we'll fix this, and then we'll call this project done. Right, folks that's looking pretty good so there may be a few spots I can come back and tap on a little bit later right before I put on the primer but for now I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this corner see if I can get that fixed well my battery's about dead Now I gotta go get a different drill. Well, that drill works better anyway. All right, now let's do some welding. Pretty good. 
All right, we're getting close, guys. Now that that corner's done, all we got left is to patch this, and I'm gonna call this one done. All right, so I got this piece of sheet metal here that I previously cut out of the trunk. It probably got cut out when I was cutting this piece out or something, or doing some of those repairs up under the bottom of that trunk lid. So it's just as good as any of the other metal on the car. It does have some pits in it, but it's just as good as the rest of the car. So I don't really need new metal for this. Piece with a few pits will be just fine for what I'm about to do here. So let's go ahead and get this little patch made. So if we can get it welded in. Maybe this will work out for me. Maybe it will. I need a block. I meant to say dolly. I need a dolly, not a block, a dolly. That'll work. Just trying to get that lip folded over. Well, let me check this to make sure it's gonna work out. Yeah, that's gonna work. That'll work just fine. All right, so I'm just trying to cut it down to length now. I think I'll go about this long with it right here. Yep, put about that much of it in. All right, let's cut this down. All right, let me get some marks on this trunk lid now so I can cut it. So I can get this piece to fit. That ought to work. Okay. That's kind of hard to see where that roll is. It's like right there. And right there. Should get me close enough. It's not really that sharp of a bend kind of a smooth round over kind of all right so let's see if that'll work yeah I'd say that looks pretty good so what we're gonna do now is go ahead and cut this to length if I can find my pen and then we're gonna go ahead and once we get this cut to length, I'll go ahead and mark out the panel, cut it out where I want it to be cut at, and then we're going to be ready to weld this thing in.
All right. Now we got a nice cut line. Let's get that cut. And then we'll weld this thing in. All right, guys, I'm not going to get much better than that, so just going to weld it up. All right, well, there's a close look at it. That works for me. I'm pretty happy with that. Don't see any issues. And now that everything's looking pretty good on that outer skin, this is what's next. So in the next video, we're gonna trim this piece. We're gonna trim the trunk lid. We're gonna get this piece ready to weld in. Once we get this piece done, we gotta straighten the dent right here. I gotta weld up a little section right down here where there's a rust hole and guys, we're gonna be getting down to the short roads on this. So I'm pretty excited about the way this thing's turning out, the way it's looking. Pretty excited about it. All right, guys, I appreciate you hanging out with me another week, watching another video on this old trunk lid project. I told you guys it was gonna take a while, and it has. I told you guys it was gonna be a challenge, and it has definitely challenged me on some things. Now, I am getting ready to move on from this. This has been a lot of work. But for a hundred year old part, I think it's coming along very well. It's looking really nice. I'm extremely happy with the way it's coming along. So, you know, I could have bought another one, but I needed to save money. And I don't know, this is probably seven or eight, maybe $900 for one of these by the time you get it shipped in. And that money will go a long way towards some other things. I got a Hemi engine to build for this thing and those are expensive. It's gonna be about five to $6,000 probably to build that. I've got to have a transmission adapter to put a five speed or either I got a 204R automatic that I could put behind it. I got several transmission options, but either way you look at it, you're looking at 1200 to 1400 right now for the adapters to put any of those transmissions in there. The automatics might be a little less, eight or 900, but either way, still gonna cost a lot of money. So saving money on this trunk lid and fixing the one I already had has took a while, but it's worth it to me because I get to spend that money now on something else for this project. Plus, you guys see all these other cars I got in here. These are all coming up next after this one's done. And um, at least that's my intentions. The 32 Ford sedan, the 32 Chevrolet Coupe. I don't know, I might sell it. I don't know, I haven't made up my mind on it yet. 37 Ford pickup. I got plenty to work on. I got the Model A uh, Roadster pickup sitting out back. I'd really love to do maybe like a rat rod or something out of it. I mean, I got plenty to spend money on, so I did not think this trunk was the right thing to be spending money on, uh, so I decided to fix the trunk lid that I got. I got plenty of other things to do to the car. We got wheel wells to replace, patch panels to put in the quarters, patch panels to put in the doors, the inner and the outers. We got a lot of work to do on the roof. We got rain gutters that had to be welded up since I Rebuilt those a while back and hadn't welded them up yet. Got that to do, got floor pans to build. I gotta build that. I gotta take that original Model A frame I showed you in the last video and put this uh, body over onto that frame. I'm gonna build a, uh, like a frame table or like a body table, I should say, out of that frame to put this body on so it'll roll around separately from this 32 frame over here. So I can get started working on the 32 frame. There's some work I wanna do to it. Um, I really want to do all this work soon, but as you guys can see, it takes a good while to build one of these cars when you're building it by yourself and you're building it in spare time. Um, this is not my full-time thing. I don't do YouTube full-time. This is a spare time deal, so it does take me a while. I appreciate you guys hanging out. I'm gonna bring you guys in here and show you a close-up of how all this looks as the video is going off. So hang around, check it out. See you guys in the next one.